Hello, the topic of this video is Image Guided Radiation Therapy, IGRT. This is uh, by definition, means imaging at the time of treatment, external beam treatment, in order to better control the position of the radiation beam relative to the patient. So uh, that's a very specific definition. You might imagine that maybe image guided radiation therapy means taking a CT scan in order to plan the treatment. That's not what it means. It really specifically means imaging at the time of treatment. Now it comes in many forms, everything from <clears throat> simple uh, planar x-ray imaging to, uh, MR to CT to MR guidance. And we're gonna go over those different forms and how they're used. And to understand this well, you're gonna to need to understand imaging pretty well. So if you haven't looked at video uh, 191 on radiography imaging and 19.2 on CT, I would encourage you to go back and review those and make sure you understand the basics of the imaging physics first. All right, here we go. What many people think of when they think of IGRT is comb beam CT on a C-arm type linag. So let's start with that. The scans are acquired with the KV imager here. You see the tube on the left and the panel on the right and it rotates around. And as it's rotating and it's acquiring images, and these are in a cone, and it's reconstructed within that volume. So you get a volume within one rotation. So let's walk through the process of IGRT. We start with a reference image that's acquired at CT simulation, and also there's a plan of, associated with that. Here's the ISO center. It's defined in planning. Let's say it's there. That comes over in the DICOM file. Now you also have the localization image that's acquired with the Comeam CT. That's a patient in the treatment position, and that also has an ISO center associated with the imaging system for the Comeam CT. So those two images are overlaid with each other. These are visualized together, and this is the process of image fusion. And there's software to support this visualization. You can move the two images relative to each other and align them. And that provides a set of table coordinates that tells you how much the patient needs to move in order to bring those uh, to the isocenter of the comium to the isocenter for, uh, that was intended in treatment planning. So those we would call the shifts. Those are programmed into the LINAC or transferred over to the LINAC and the table is automatically moved and the patient then is at isocenter for uh, treatment. So let me show you then what this might look like in one of the vendor software systems. So let's say you start with these two images. They're grossly misaligned here, but you wouldn't usually be that far off, but let's say they are. This system has various options for alignment. You'll see you can do it manually, or you could do it automatically with a bone algorithm or some other algorithm. Let's pick the bone, translation and rotation. And then we click auto register, and then it's aligned with each other. All right. So a couple of things to note here. In this system, the automatic registration looked only at image data within this clip box, which you can define. And here are the translation and rotation that is required to get the alignment. So some tables or patient support assemblies can both translate. That means move in X, Y, Z, and then they can also rotate. So pitch, yaw, and roll. Those are called six degree of freedom couches. Let's say we don't have that option and it's, and it's only a translation that's possible here. So you need to convert the translation and rotation into just a translation. So I click here and there we go. These are the, the shifts that will be sent to the um, machine that controls the couch. And you, so we can look through the registration here, you, different ways to visualize it with a, a blending or a cut or a checkerboard. You can see if we go back and forth, you can see how much the head flexes. That's one of the advantages of the volumetric IGRT is you can look at issues like that. So those are the basics of IGRT with Chromium CT. And we'll see some other technology in a few minutes that's also volumetric in nature, volumetric IGRT. But before I do that, 
Let me talk about another form of IGRT, which is using uh, just planar images. Those are radiographs. Those can be either taken with a KV imager or with an MV imager. And let me walk through how those are used. And the acquisition is similar with the Comeme. The KV imaging system comes out, but you acquire one image there. And then you rotate around, and I'm going to acquire another image here, the AP direction. So now we've got two images. And from those two images, we can figure out the 3D position, position of the patient. I'm going to show you how that's done. So let's say we start from this angle, the AP, and the goal is to image the position of this bone, let's say. So I'm going to have a beam, and I'm going to draw a line through the center of the bone, and let's say we want to figure out where the center is. So the bone lies somewhere along that line. And we rotate around here, and we're going to acquire a lateral image. Again, shoot the image, and then we know uh, that the bone lies somewhere along that line. So now you know the center of the bone lies at the intersection of these two lines, and that's how you accomplish this type of alignment. This is called orthogonal imaging, or sometimes you'll hear it called orthogonal pair or isopair, meaning in a pair of images taken at isocenter to verify the isocenter. The idea is you have two images, usually perpendicular to each other, that allow you to divine the three-dimensional position of the patient. So, so now that you understand this, Let's look at an example. So as with Comium CT, you start with some reference image. Here's the reference image. It's the DRR from CT simulation. And DRR means digitally reconstructed radiograph. That's an important concept. Concept. You take the CT and you turn it into a radiograph from whatever angle you're interested in imaging. Now along with this, then, you have the KV planar images. Here I'm showing KV, but they could be MV. These are acquired on treatment with the patient in position. You see the image quality of the AP direction is better because than the lateral because the patient is thicker laterally. So I'm going to make this red, and then I can do an image fusion with the two things. And now you'll see in this particular example there's an offset. Again, the red is a localization taken on treatment, and the gray is the reference image. And you can see the offset here, and, you, and now I can start to move it. The software allows me to do this. I move it here, uh, superior, and then let's say left, right, and you see the numbers shift in the bottom right as I'm doing this. And finally then um, you get a good alignment uh, that you can see here, and we would know what the shifts are for this. And those go over automatically to the device. So you'll see with the planar imaging, you can only really visualize bone, or maybe markers, you can see markers here that are implanted into the prostate, but you can't visualize soft tissue, say muscle versus prostate versus tumor versus whatever, and that's where volumetric imaging, like Comium CT, comes in. So let me talk about other technologies for IGRT. We talked about the C-arm LINAC, and you can go back and look at this in video 9.2 where we talked about the technology in more detail. But there are other technologies as well, and you'll see these in video 9.2 also. We talked about tomotherapy system, a ring gantry system that looks like a CT from the outside, but if you look inside, you'll see all these different components. You'll see a LINAC here, a low energy LINAC. Uh, we see that the collimation system here, the binary MLC, uh, down below, you have a detector and a beam stop. So um, this geometry means that it's megavoltage CT. In other words, it's using the megavoltage beam of the LINAC to do CT imaging. In the newer version of this unit, you actually have a KV system. So you can have KV comb beam CT in this orthogonal direction. Another system is CyberKnife. We saw this in video 9.2 also. There's a LINAC here. And that's on a robotic arm that can move around. And, and then there's the imaging system coupled with that. So the imaging system where these two tubes up in the ceiling and they shoot down and there are imagers down in the floor. And you have imaging, the panels are in the floor and you can get two images then. They're not exactly orthogonal to each other, but they provide three-dimensional information about where the patient is. And you can image before and during treatment get the 3D alignment. Again, 
Um, you don't get soft tissue visualization with this, but bones and markers are easily visualized. And you can get more information on this with APM Task Group 135. The most advanced type of IGRT now emerging is MR-guided radiotherapy. And the idea here is that you image with an MR magnet as you're treating. These uh, are images are from the V-ray system, and we saw this again in video 9.2. And now that you understand MRI imaging better, you can understand uh, what, the, what this system would be like. Uh, the first treatments with this technology were in 2014 with the V-Ray system that was a cobalt-based system, three cobalt heads, uh, but now there's a Linux version of this, and the technology and the techniques and understanding are all emerging very quickly with this technology. Right now, 2019, we uh, have uh, two commercial systems uh, are in place, the V-Ray system, which is a low-field strength magnet, 0.35 Tesla, and a system from Electa, which uses a higher 1.5 T magnet. All right, so now that you understand the technology a little better, I'd like to describe some of the scenarios under which IGRT can be used. So one way to look at this is look at different types of IGRT. So you have, number one, online corrections. This means this is a correction done uh, immediately prior to or even during the radiation session and it require, requires uh, somebody, an operator, to initiate the adjustments. Second is an offline correction. That's uh, with the idea that it's going, it, the imaging is done, but it's going to be applied at the next session of treatment. A final type of IGRT is real-time IGRT. It's similar to the online method, but you have imaging throughout the treatment, so you can have an adjustment of the patient position during treatment. That's typically automatic and sometimes without the intervention of the operator. So uh, let's look at what these three scenarios might look like with some example data. This is a publication. The first graph here shows the patient alignment over different fractions when no IGOT is used. So you can note two things here. One, there's quite a bit of variability from fraction to fraction, from day to day. And also there's an offset, and it's not centered around zero. So that means there's some systematic difference between the alignment that was done at simulation versus uh, on treatment. And there's some, there's some sh uh, overall shift every day. Second is the offline correction. And you'll see that after the first fraction or maybe a few fractions, that systematic error is taken care of but the random error is still there. It's still varying quite a bit from day to day. That's because you image on one day, but then apply the correction the next day, so you still got that variability. And then finally, you have online correction. So that's where you image just prior to treatment and then treat, and you can see the variability is quite reduced. So uh, let's look at how this plays out in terms of some of the technology. So uh, going down the columns, looking at whether you can visualize things in soft tissue or fiducials, metallic fiducials that are implanted. You can see how this would look in different technologies. Uh, the one I didn't describe was the Calypso system. Let me just say a few words about that. That is a system of implanted f fiducials that have RF radio frequency beacons in them, a little antenna. You implant them as you would a prostate seed. It's FDA cleared for prostate treatments. And, and then there's a, a sort of a, a receiver panel and transmitter panel that goes over the patient that can localize the position of those little implanted RF beacons in the patient in real time. So with uh, you can watch them move through time and then determine uh, whether they're in place, whether the beam should be shut off or not. Okay, so continuing on, uh, online corrections, you can see all the system or would uh, allow for that. Offline corrections, uh, some, some of them would. Uh, Calypso, no, because you have to do it uh, while you're being treated. And then real-time um, corrections, that's the um, one where the first two technologies that we spent a lot of time talking about, KV, Comium CT, and MVCT in particular, are not really very good 
the other systems are. So you can see there's trade-offs between the various technologies and depending on what you need. And really the only one with, which has checks across all of these is MR-guided radiotherapy, which is underscores some of the interest in this. All right, now I'd like to talk about the availability of IGRT technologies and practice patterns um, with reference to some recent data around this. This study reported uh, survey results from practices in the United States on image-guided therapy, what was available, or the practice patterns. This was conducted in 2014. One of the main results is that 92% of respondents reported that they had some sort of volumetric IGRT. So that's excluding portal images like KV and MV planar images, which um, many people would have. But in addition to that, 92% said they have uh, these volumetric imaging, typically combing CT. And then let's look at then how they use this technology. So this study looked first of all at what types of IGRT are being used, and you can see it varies by disease site. So you got many different options here running up and down. Uh, you'll see that um, chromium CT or megavoltage CT is quite common in the brain or the head and neck. Uh, and also though, you can see that KV planar imaging is also fairly common as well. So that kind of varies. And then in other disease sites like breast, planar imaging is much more common than chromium CT. That is driven largely by the desire to reduce dose to the patient. And it's thought that the portal imaging of the beam, portal imaging meaning the beams that are being treated, that's um, enough to verify the positioning. Now let's look at how often, how frequently the IGRT is used. So that's another uh, result from the study. So you can see um, either the first few fractions only, weekly, daily, or never by disease site, and you'll see that um, some disease sites that IGRT is being used daily in a vast majority of places, whereas others it's being used less frequently, weekly, in uh, the breast, let's say, again, to reduce dose, or in the brain, uh, the factor driving that being that the alignment is usually often sufficient with um, the bony anatomy and, and marks that the patient can be set up well with only weekly imaging needed. Now, all of this is changing and evolving quite rapidly. Here's some survey data, a little bit older, from the group at University of California, San Diego. And you'll see the trends here over time. So you can see that back in the late 90s, there was very little IGRT available at all. But then it grew quite quickly. First of all, growing with megavoltage planar imaging with the online EPID devices, growing steadily over, over time in the 2000s. And then also, you know, importantly, the KV planar imaging and the volumetric imaging, mostly being comium CT. And you'll see those start to grow, especially after 2004, going up very quickly. And now we know that those reach are close to 100% usage across the country. So these things um, have changed and will continue to change quickly uh, in the coming years. Now let's look for a moment at what evidence is there that IGRT is effective and needed. This is a review paper by some of the prominent experts in the, on this topic. They conclude that there's little direct evidence, but there's quite a bit of indirect evidence. More, more data is emerging now, though, as time goes on. And the answer to this is probably disease site specific and application specific, but here's a study from a multi-institutional group in France. Uh, there have been many single institutional studies and retrospective studies, but nothing prospective. What they did here was to do a randomized control trial where they're randomizing to daily versus weekly IGRT for prostate treatment, 470 patients. They found that recurrence-free survival was unaffected. Overall survival was slightly worse, but there was some probably some a good explanation for that. But the important thing, grade one and greater late rectal toxicity was much lower. Acute uh, rectal bleeding was lower, two times lower. And biochemical-free survival and progression-free survival were two times higher. 
with IGRT perform daily versus perform weekly. And all of these were significant. So there are some criticisms that you can make about this study. As they used relatively small margins for the PTV, five millimeters. There is only a four-year follow-up and so on, but it's, it's part of an emerging pattern of data. And you'll see some more formal recommendations around this emerging. This is a guideline from a multi-society guideline spearheaded by ASTRO looking at hyperfractionated radiation for prostate cancer. This is an expert panel assembled to examine various key questions around this, and they look at the evidence and make evidence-based recommendations for this. One of, one of the key questions they considered was in patients receiving moderately hyperfractionated or ultra-hyperfractionated external beam, how is the treatment uh, using IGRT compared to treatment not using IGRT? And they looked at this question, and the recommendation is that IGRT is universally recommended when delivering this type of a treatment for prostate cancer. And those are strong recommendations based on the evidence with 100% consensus among these experts. Now I'd like to focus on the important topic of QA of imaging systems. I'm going to focus on IGRT systems here. In uh, video 20, I talked about uh, other imaging systems, but I didn't get to talk about the QA of those systems. So what I'm going to talk about here will actually apply to those as well. Here's a list of some of the key references in IGRT QA. The first one is the Medical Physics Practice Guideline number two. And then there are a series of task group reports from the AAPM that are important. There are some other documents as well that are important to know about. There are ACR and Astro APM uh, guidelines used for practice accreditation. There are some white papers. There are some other task group reports. There's a report from the Canadian group. So this is a long list, and I don't want this to be overwhelming. It's meant to be a reference list, and I'm going to walk through the key concepts here. So probably the most Productive way to begin to understand this is to look at some of the tests. So here, here's a select list of the key tests that are recommended. And you can see there's a test for KV or MV planar systems, radiographs, or COMIM CT, QA of that. Uh, and you'll see in the table then that there are various recommendations from these different reports in terms of what tests are done and the frequencies, annual, monthly, daily. This is a lot of information, so probably the simplest way to look at this is to go through each of these tests and understand what they are and how they're accomplished. So let me do that. So let's start with these tests. Geometry, spatial resolution, contrast, noise, and uniformity. Let's look first at planar imaging QA. This can be either MV or KV. Here you'll see a phantom has embedded objects and is placed close to the imager or on the imager. In this case, it's a plastic and it's used for KV imaging, but there's a metal version for MV. So if we zoom in, we see there's a section here with different line pairs, line pair per millimeter. And depending on which one you can visualize, that tells you what the resolution is of that imager. Up here is a row that allows you to assess the contrast of the image you can distinguish very, these various blocks that have different contrasts. You can look at noise, and you can look at geometrical uh, distances. And here's the type of images that you might get on the right, and you can analyze these metrics. So this is uh, the analogous test for Comium CT. There is this uh, cat fan. That means customer acceptance test phantom. So this would be something that's delivered with a new imaging system, and then the customer goes through a testing procedure and accepts that device for use. So when you scan the cat fan, this is what you get. Here's a coronal cut through the phantom, and you can see there's different inserts inside the phantom. So let's look at the first one in an axial view, the contrast section, and you can see there's different embedded uh, cylinders with different Hansfeld units. So you can analyze those and look at the contrast between them. You can look at the geometry. 
Here are sections for spatial resolution in the middle, and on the right, uniformity of the Hounsfield units. Are they uniform over this axial cut? So let's go back to the table then. So you can see there are variations in what the recommendations are for the various reports. Some reports don't make any recommendations about certain tests. In others, the frequency is different. If you see TG142 uh, requests a higher frequency. Let's look down here at dose. I'm, I'm not going to talk about that in any detail, but the reports are suggesting you should measure it annually. And up, Let's jump up to the top of the list and look at these two. Positioning and registration of the IGR2 system. And then looking at the imaging isocenter and treatment isocenter and see whether they match each other. So all these you should test daily according to these reports. So let me show you how you accomplish that. Here's a phantom that you can line up with the isocenter using the lasers. You'll notice here that it's offset from the center. Embedded in the phantom are objects that you can image. They're air holes in this case. So here they are. You do the comium CT, you align them like we did in the clinical case, and then you'll see there's a translation and maybe a rotation. And so the QA consists of measuring these translations or rotations and seeing how they match with what your known offset is here from the setup. So uh, with this type of phantom, you can also look at the planar images and you can determine how well the isocenters match for the planar images. And that's an important test to do because the imaging subsystem is different than the therapy delivery subsystem. And we have to make sure that those two isocenters of those two systems match. So that's it in a nutshell for the QA of the IGOT systems. I'm really simplifying things, but I think we've hit on some of the key concepts, hopefully. All right, so there you have the basics of image-guided radiation therapy. I know this is a lot to digest. It's one of the challenges of uh, the uh, modern field of radiation therapy physics is that you actually have to know a lot of the imaging world as well. You know, in medical physics, you can be board certified in uh, therapy physics or imaging physics, but actually in, in therapy, you even need to know quite a bit of imaging. I'm going to leave you with some further reading here. You can um, understand more about IGRT. There's a lot of reports and topics, and these are some of them. And then uh, in the next video, we're going to come around to look at uh, what happens during the time of treatment in terms of patient motion and respiration and other effects. Okay, thanks.